Hi, everyone. I'm really pleased to welcome you on this Thursday of the ecosystem experience. Now, by now, you've probably heard a lot about OVH Cloud, about our partner, about our ecosystem, and how we work together. For this session, we back on the subject of sustainability data center cloud. Um, during this ecosystem experience, at the beginning, we've announced ambitious goal. Uh, for instance, being carbon neutral in our operation by 2025, or use 100% renewable energy by then as well, and then go the extra mile on, for instance, being net zero by 2030. We've also done a deep dive on the carbon footprint calculation itself. Uh, we've also done uh, a specific session with the INRIA team on how we go further on measuring, even with virtual machines, for instance, and we go into the field of software efficiency. Um, so today, I mean, as the final day and as parting thought, we, we wanted to discuss with, uh, with you about, you know, what's really the uh, impact of the digital economy on the environment. You probably have heard a lot of different things about it. And I'm sure you've seen maybe documentary or read uh, about like the data center being the next big factories, a bit like during the first industrial revolution, you have this image of like chimney stack for the data centers. Well, we wanted to discuss openly about this today um, and really go deeper on that topic. So I'm Francis Terrain, Chief Industrial Officer at OVH Cloud, I'm in charge of all the data center engineering, construction and operation, as well as our server assembly as we manufacture our own servers. And when speaking about carbon emission, definitely at OVH Cloud, I'm the villain because I'm responsible for almost 100% of our carbon emission. So it's good news because I'm also the sponsor of our sustainability program. Um, and today I have the immense privilege to welcome in this session, George Camilla from the International Energy Agency. At the International Energy Agency, George um, coordinate all the work on tracking clean energy progress and digitization and is a lead analyst on ICT energy use and automated and share uh, mobility. So if there is somebody that can answer our question on the digital uh, impact and the digital, the data center electric consumption, that's definitely him. Uh, I feel really blessed to have him for that topic today. Um, so, George, before I give you the floor, I, I have a question to start. Um, we, before we talk about the perspective and the future, which we definitely want to do today, uh, we wanted to kind of set the, the baseline. Where are we today? Um, sometimes we hear more and more, you know, cloud data center being a quiet polluting business. Can you help shed some light on this for us? Sure. Thanks, Francois. So, I mean... Yeah, like Francois, you said, um, there's been a lot of headlines, media coverage out there uh, about the, the, the energy and, and carbon footprint of data centers, the internet in general. So here's a, a headline from a couple years ago in The Guardian saying that a tsunami of data would you know, be responsible for a fifth of uh, global electricity use uh, by 2025, and that's in just five years. And this is not a, a new trend. We've seen headlines like this before, even 20 years ago. So here's a headline from 1999 in Forbes saying that, you know, we need to, to build more coal-fired power plants because the internet economy is going to consume half of the U.S. electricity uh, within the next decade. And clearly that didn't happen. Uh, in reality, uh, the internet in the U.S. consumed about 1.5 to 2% of electricity by 2010. So those predictions didn't happen. So I guess the question is, why are those predictions, um, you know, so common in the media? What is actually happening in reality? So I think the common myth is that because there's very rapid growth in internet traffic and all these uh, digital demands that, you know, of course, there's going to be higher energy consumption. And that's just not true. So in the left graph, you can see that internet uh, traffic has grown by 12, 13 times over the last decade. Uh, data center workloads, so this is a measure of demand, has also grown by over seven times. Uh, but electricity use has only grown by 3%. So it's, it's been relatively flat, despite this huge growth in, in everything else that should be driving it upwards. 
And really, it's two main things that are, are, are helping to keep electricity demand flat. So one is um, the computing itself is getting more efficient. So there's this, uh, it's kind of the corollary of uh, Moore's law. It's called Kumi's law, where we show a, a doubling of energy efficiency of computing every roughly two to three years. And that trend is, is very quick compared to every other economic sector that we can think of when we think of energy efficiency. So at the at the very small levels, we're seeing very large uh, improvements in energy efficiency. And of course, this massive shift that we're seeing from very inefficient, small, so-called traditional enterprise data centers, you can see on the graph on the right, uh, those are shifting more and more to very efficient, centralized, um, uh, larger data centers, so cloud and hyperscale data centers. So that migration plus the at the, the compute level, the efficiencies have, have managed to keep the electricity demand flat over the last decade. So, yeah, I mean, you know, read those uh, headlines with a grain of salt, because uh, in reality, the, the facts bear a different uh, picture. Yeah, thanks, George, uh, for this insight. Um, definitely when you um, when this study was published and any update every year, I see and I can read a lot of reaction in the, a, a lot of time. It's actually surprise. It's quite counterintuitive. Uh, a lot of people outside our sector, they just think that, uh, the data center electricity consumption is exploding. And, and then they start to understand indeed the dynamic of moving to cloud. Um, so it's definitely uh, something that is a revelation for, for a lot of people and uh, maybe for you as well. Um, and so, we really focus on the total electricity consumption. George talked about the uh, compute efficiency. I wanted to share a few other metrics as well that um, can describe this gain of efficiency. Um, in, uh, in the data center business, we look at very uh, important metrics in terms of energy efficiency, because this is the first pillar and the most important pillar is being efficient, right? The greenest uh, kilowatt hour is the one you don't consume. That sounds um, an understatement, but you need to repeat it every single day. And one metrics in the data center industry that has been used quite, uh, quite a lot. It has its own shortcomings, but it's very, very wide, uh, widely deployed and is easy to understand is the uh, power usage efficiency, which is a ratio between the total power of the data center and the, the power that goes to, um, the, the servers. Um, and the best is one, um, the global average is around 1.6. That means you need 60% electricity overhead. Uh, the best data center right now are around, uh, even around 1.1. We have an average around 1.25. Um, given that we have older generation data center, our newer start are closer to 1.1. So that really is the energy consumption. We need to look also at water usage and it's a new metric. Um, there's still not that much data available around. Just wanted to share that because this is the next big topic after energy uh, consumption. It's water consumption. On our side, we're using closed loop systems that makes our water consumption very, very low. And we use water cooling as well. That is very efficient on, 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 on power usage as well. Um, for us, we need basically like a, a glass of water to be able to cool a server for 10 hours. Um, while the rest of the um, industry, the data we got, was around a full bottle, like 1.8 liter uh, uh, per kilowatt hour. Right? And of course, uh, it's better to have a data center in a grid that is fairly low carbon versus a grid that is very uh, high carbon intensity, right? And we've operated mostly at OVH Cloud in, in France and Quebec, and now we're getting more global, which makes our like uh, carbon intensity pretty low, 100 uh, gram per uh, kilowatt hour. While the um, worldwide average for electricity, as published by the International Energy Agency, is around um, four, uh, 475 gram per kilowatt. So it shows that you could look at those metrics as well to see how efficient uh, you are as data center, and we work a lot on that. So now that we've set the stage um, on where we stand today, uh, I wanted to uh, have a discussion with George on where you see we're going. Uh, and also to give you a few perspective on what we can do to, to get better. Um, and the first thing is, okay, we've seen the data center being flat in terms of electricity consumption. 
thanks to the move to cloud, right, and the energy efficiency. But, well, we might have tapped out the, the potential of energy efficiency or, or move to cloud already. And so, yeah, but the data is continuing to grow in terms of data demand, right? That internet curve going to the right is still going to the right. Uh, so, Georgia, how, how can we do to, to keep it flat? And what, what do you see as trend for the data center? Yeah, no, it's a it's a great question, and it's it's a question everyone is grappling with because indeed I think the the consumption of um, data will only continue to grow, and you know through the COVID crisis I think we're we're even consuming more because now we're working from home, uh, watching more uh, more streaming video, all these issues. So um, I think that side is going to be a challenge to slow down. So the other other side of the coin is can we um, continue the efficiency gains that we've seen in the past? And some of the trends are beginning to slow, um, which is very concerning. Also, there are, I think, the, the major gains that we've seen with migration from these very inefficient data centers, uh, the smaller data centers to cloud and hyperscale. You know, of course, there are limits to how many of those can we shift as, you know, uh, more and more is being shifted to the cloud and hyperscale. Uh, so it's really a battle between those two trends. So. Uh, but that's, you know, only really considering current trends and current technologies, right? So, you know, if we think, um, you know, 10 years ago, we, we weren't really thinking of blockchain or, or, or emerging technologies. Now we're talking about blockchain, uh, AI, machine learning, uh, 5G, the Internet of Things, augmented reality, virtual reality, all these, uh, these new technologies and new trends. And it's really hard to predict what those technologies themselves would bring to data center energy demand. Uh, and energy demand more broadly, and even in other sectors. So, you know, it's really this battle. Um, of course, technology can get more efficient as well. Maybe uh, researchers will develop next generation technologies that are even more efficient uh, than what we have today with hyperscale. Uh, and, it, you know, a good example, I think, of this is in Bitcoin mining. Uh, you know, initially uh, they were processing Bitcoin mining with uh, with laptops. In each generation of of hardware, they got much more efficient but they also got much more um, energy intensive as well um, or more powerful. So it's kind of this battle where, you know, you can develop better technologies, but then uh, there's going to be uh, rebound effects from that as well. So uh, another interesting challenge, I think, is the some of the emerging technologies like autonomous vehicles that we might see in the next decades, if we ever see them. Uh, they're going to demand very high latency, uh, sorry, uh, low latency, so fast data transfers at very low uh, delays. Uh, that's going to mean uh, emergence of edge data centers, which might mean um, a different kind of data center uh, energy uh, perspective. So really, I think the key, the three keys are really maximizing efficiency with the technologies we have today, um, try to get that energy consumption, as Francois said, as low as possible, uh, you know, every kilowatt saved is, is hour saved is, is is very good, and then supply the remaining with renewables and other low carbon energies, and then invest in, in innovation so that we have better technologies. You know, five ten years from now, so that we can get over this uh, uh, any efficiency slowdown. Yeah, so a lot a lot a lot of work and a lot of potential, right? Um, but we talked a lot about data centers. Um, this is not a full picture, right? Of IT and the digital world. It's networks, it's devices as well. Let's talk about networks for a little bit now. Um, you, you know, uh, we hear about, for instance, a debate on, on 5G in France about the environmental impact of 5G. Um, and I know you've done study also on the network consumption. Um, so can you give us a little bit of perspective on what's happening on the network side of things now that the data center seems, you know, doable in terms of control? Yeah. So, so data centers globally are consuming about 200 terawatt hours a year, which is about you know 0.8 percent of global electricity use. Uh, data transmission networks are consuming about 250 terawatt hours, so uh, maybe about 1.1 percent of global electricity use. Uh, and actually, more than half, about two thirds of that electricity use, is for mobile networks. Um, and that. So, you know, I showed the, the graph showing data center energy use being really flat uh, for mobile networks, especially, uh, but networks in general, the trend is slightly increasing. So it's not increasing rapidly, uh, but over, over the last uh, few years, there's a, a slight increase. Uh, and then if you thought, think about the ICT sector as a whole, 
Uh, the other prong, I guess, is devices. So that adds a number of about 300 terawatt hours. That includes you know, computers, uh, laptops, smartphones, um, routers, things like that. So for the ICT sector as a whole, that's about 800 terawatt hours a year. Um, of course, for devices, uh, the, you know, a big share of the, the footprint is from production, uh, manufacture, and of course, disposal with e-waste. So, you know, that's a, another important factor to think about, especially for devices where the, the usage is, is lower than in networks and, and uh, data centers. So for greenhouse gas emissions, the best estimates I've seen is about 1.4, 1.5% of global GHG emissions are coming from uh, the ICT sector, and it's been pretty flat since 2010. Uh, but I think because more and more things are getting connected to the internet, the, the scope of what is considered ICT is getting a bit fuzzy. So, you know, the best example I think of is, is connected TVs. So historically, that's been part of a different sector, entertainment and media, uh, and not included in the ICT sector. But now that they're connected TVs, you know, there's a question of whether that should be part of it or not. And, um, and when preparing this, uh, we discussed about um, the, the, the 5G and you were telling me something fascinating that the, the environmental footprint of 5G is more about the number of subscribers rather than the actual data uh, transmitted, like the amount of data. Um, is that something you can talk about? Yeah, yeah. so it, it's uh, emerging research uh, and numbers that are coming out from some of the, the network uh, equipment providers in that um, actually, so if, you know, 500 people connected to a base station, they're all kind of drawing a certain small load of electricity. Uh, if they decide to stream video or something, their electricity consumption goes up a little bit, but it's no longer um, electricity consumption being proportional to data, which is how we were modeling this in the past. So, uh, of course, if everyone is uh, streaming video at the same time, that might be a different question, but I think as users are connected, there's kind of a base uh, electricity use, and then uh, they come and go, transfer data. So um, the, the way we're calculating energy consumption, I think, will change for, for data, center, uh, data transmission networks uh, as we see very high uh, bit rate applications like streaming video, uh, virtual reality, and things like that. And actually, that brings me to a, a topic uh, that is emerging as well is like, digital responsibility, sobriety, like uh, what's up, you know, as an individual, um, you know, do you have a responsibility when you, you, you watch video, or you put video on, on, uh, on your mobile phone, for instance. Um, and, you know, can, can you, you know, share your perspective on that and, and maybe give some best practice or, or uh, maybe reassure people? I don't know. But um, yeah, this is definitely an upcoming theme that, we have a role to play is digital sobriety or responsibility. What is it exactly, right? Yeah. So, you know, I think we should be more responsible for our digital lives so for, for a variety of reasons, not, not just uh, our keeping our environmental footprint low for health reasons, for privacy reasons, for security reasons. There's a multitude of reasons. I think that uh, we need to be responsible. Um, and I think it's important to acknowledge that there is a real world impact on the environment of our digital lives, which, you know, kind of seem virtual and, and non-existent. Uh, but in physical reality, they are emitting greenhouse gas emissions. They're using energy. Uh, they're using rare earth metals. Uh, and of course, they're generating a lot of electronic waste. So, uh, but, but I think I'd like to put that into context. So, uh, relatively speaking, even the most um, data intensive applications like streaming video are fairly low energy use uh, and emitting activities compared to every other thing we do in our daily lives. So, um, and most of those impacts are actually coming from the device. So, you know, if you think about streaming a video on a big screen TV, that's about 120 watts from the television, uh, a very small, you know, another 10, 10 watts or something from uh, the, the data transmission and, and data center. So it's really mostly from the, the device choice. So I think if, if people want to be uh, more responsible with their uh, digital footprint uh, to reduce energy use, uh, really the starting point is to, to watch uh, things on smaller screens. So, you know, instead of your big screen TV on a, a laptop, uh, on a smartphone, those can have a very big effect. So a smartphone is about 100 times less uh, energy using than a large TV. So, you know, that's, that's a big difference. 
maybe in the big picture, uh, you know, the, the, it's, I think it's really good to think about our personal uh, carbon footprints, uh, but really the, the large share of most of our footprints, I think, come from transportation, especially if we fly, uh, diet choices, uh, and then choices around home heating and cooling, which sometimes maybe we don't have choices over. You know, it's really dependent on the electricity grid that we rely on or the technologies that are built in. So, you know, thinking big picture for climate, um, there's a lot we can do. So there's things we should be doing at the individual level, you know, doing what we can, cycling, uh, eating less carbon intensive diets. Uh, but there's also a lot of structural changes. So, you know, think about even data centers and, and data transmission networks. Those rely on electricity from the grid. So if we need, if we want to keep reducing um, the carbon footprint of those technologies, as well as every other technology that relies on electricity, we're going to need big structural changes that, you know, governments can lead on, corporations, uh, and we need, we need action uh, very sh in the near term, not just, you know, targets that are being set uh, 30 years from now. So uh, thanks so much, George, for this uh, inspiring thought. Um, I wish we had more time, like a few hours to discuss all this topic because they are so important uh, and so inspiring and, and, and so uh, defining for our future, right? Um, but I also can't want to interact with our uh, audience on these topics. Um, and before we we, we close uh, and leave the floor to you, uh, I just wanted to sum up all what we've discussed about during this ecosystem experience about sustainability, which is really a key topic and a key program for us at OBH Cloud. Um, we talk about resource and design efficiency. We talk about uh, renewable energy. Our goal to be using 100% renewable energy by 2025. Uh, we talk about also circular economy, the fact that we're reusing and we're recycling our servers. Uh, we talked about our goal to be carbon neutral, but not just by compensating, first by reducing and calculating the right way. We include uh, our server manufacturing phase in our carbon reporting, and we do a full life cycle assessment. And then at the end of this, we compensate. Uh, we also want to engage users and we want to give them the right data to make the right choice. Um, and all of this is part of our uh, program for 2025. This is the beginning of a really important journey. So thank you all for uh, listening to us. Um, all the numbers and the study that George uh, referred to are also available on the International Agency website. Uh, you will find a lot of stuff there. Um, and now it's time for the Q&A session and the chat together. Very eager to discuss this topic with you. Thank you.